അസാധ്യമായൊന്നും ഇല്ലെനിക്കെന്നും നീ എൻ്റെ അരികിലുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അസാധ്യമായൊന്നും ഇല്ലെനിക്കെന്നും നീ എൻ്റെ അരികിലുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നേടിയതൊക്കെയും ശൂന്യത മാത്രം സ്വരം കേൾക്കുകിലെങ്കിൽ നിൻ സ്വരം കേൾക്കുകിലെങ്കിൽ നേടിയതൊക്കെയും ശൂന്യത മാത്രം നിൻ സ്വരം കേൾക്കുകിലെങ്കിൽ നിൻ സ്വരം കേൾക്കുകിൽ a 
അസാധ്യമായൊന്നും ഇല്ലെനിക്കെന്നും നീ എൻ്റെ അരികിലുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ
ലഭിച്ചിടുവാനായി അജഗണമായി നീ മാറണം ഇടയൻ്റെ സ്നേഹം മുകർന്നിടുവാനായി ിടുവാനായി അജഗണമായി നീ മാറണം ഇടയൻ്റെ സ്നേഹം മുകർന്നിടുവാനായി ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് this evening i'm extremely happy to be here with all of you on the occasion of the blessing and inauguration of our new community here in sugarland and i'm sure you may be surprised to see a few of us wearing a different brown habit different from the normal franciscans or the usual franciscans and i thought it, it is fitting that we explain a little about our congregation our foundation in usa and introduce the brothers who are going to be in this community before we begin the formal blessing and inauguration of our community the congregation of the missionary brothers of st francis of assisi a latin name pandigas missionary sandy francis was founded in india by a german missionary called the paulus morris who came in from germany and the foundation was done in 1901 and our community is a religious missionary institute of political right another sacred congregation for the evangelization of people the congregation follows the rule of the third order regular of st francis of assisi so that's why i said we are different from the normal franciscans because the oifms which is represented by father john bock who is here was founded by st francis of assisi himself and our congregation has adopted the rules and the spirit of st francis of assisi and we are popularly known as the third order regular of the, the franciscan group the congregation rose 
is carry some inspiration from the life and teachings of St. Francis of Assisi, the patron, and Brother Paulus Morris, the founder of CMSF. Our brothers are working in Paraguay and Bolivia, in Sri Lanka, in Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Canada, India, and here in the USA. Our congregation has seven provinces, one each in South America and Sri Lanka, and five provinces in India. Provinces means these are administrative units. And the CMS of Paddison is brotherhood dedicated to pioneering evangelization. Therefore, evangelization is our vision. Brotherhood is the mission and pioneering is the way of our existence. And we carry out the mandate, the mission understood to us by the church through our apostolate in the schools, technical schools, boys' homes and orphanages, dispensaries, hospitals, Occasional training centers, agricultural farms, youth movements, engineering and management colleges. Probably you may not come across a congregation of men that has so many apostolate or congregation that has got multi apostolates. We have that, and our policy is. We begin an apostolate depending on the need of the place and need of the people. Having said so much about the congregation, I would like to say something about our coming to USA. A few years ago, in 1993, while I was a student in Manila, La Salle University, I happened to meet one of the provincials of the IFMS in USA, provincial of the Cincinnati province. And that was Father John Bock, who is present here. He invited me to visit USA. And I said, I'm only a student. First of all, I need to get a permission for my major superiors. Secondly, I need money. He said, if your superiors give you the permission, I'll take out of the second. I asked my superiors at that time, and he said, well, if the Franciscan community is ready to sponsor you, I have no problem. So he sponsored my first trip to USA. That was a study tour. I spent two months in Akron, Ohio, practicing or learning about chemical dependency treatment program. And from 93, I've been coming back practically every other year till 98. And I spoke to Father John Bock a few times about opening a community of always in USA and he was ready to help. And when I spoke to my major superiors back in India, they said the time has not come. So I had to wait till 1997, till I was elected as assistant superior general of the congregation to pursue that dream. But meanwhile, for John Bob completed his term of nine years as provincial, two terms as provincial, and he was out of office. And then I went around, met few other provincials, few bishops in different places, and began to discuss about opening a community. Of course, the responses were very well positive, but one way or another, we are not able to materialize that plan. 
till 2001. In 2000, year 2000, I happened to meet Bishop of Brooklyn, Bishop, former Bishop of Brooklyn, Bishop Thomas Daly, and spoke to him about the plan of opening a community. And he said, you are most welcome. So then, of course, we had to wait for some time before the brothers could come in with a missionary visa, finding a house for the residents, and so on. So it took almost one year. In 2001, April, we inaugurated our community in New York with the three brothers, brothers Tadeus, Roji, and Johnny Joseph. From 98, I've been coming to Houston. Of course, the first visit was to meet Father John Bok, who was already in Galveston by that time. Since then, I've been coming to meet our friend Tom, sorry, Matthew Stepan and Mary Stepan, the family. By the way, I knew Matthew from 1975. So 30 years ago, we had met and we knew each other quite well. And three times I came and went. And each time I discussed about opening a community this side. But for one reason or another, I didn't have the time or the time had not come. Couldn't materialize. And this March, I came back. I was here. And Matthew and myself, we went to meet Father John Bok. Spoke to him about studying a community, but there was nothing sure about anything. While traveling back from Galveston, the car, we discussed about the possibility of starting a community, finding a place, and so on. And Matthew said, yeah, probably we can look for a house and it may not be that difficult to find one. I said, okay, if we can find a house, then naturally we can ask His Grace, Lord Bishop, for permission to start a community. <coughs> and I went around for two days looking for old houses and new houses. I was taken around by baby, brother of Matthew. And then I had to go back to New York because it was almost time for me to go to Canada to visit our community there. So I left a word with Matthew saying, if anything comes along, please call me, I'll come again. So I went to New York. The next day he called me and said, there's a house put on sale that is a foreclosure home. Foreclosure home is there. Uh, is good house, will I put in a proposal for it? Then I said, uh, well, I have to discuss with the council. He said, if you wait for all that, the house may go, because it is a very good house, and the price cut to our price asked for is very low. So then I discussed with the brothers there in New York and said, OK. So we gave in the proposal. Then I went to Canada. We will have to wait for some time to know whether it will be accepted. And while I was in Canada, he called me again and said, our proposal is accepted. And as Franciscans, we do not have any credit history. So we can't get a, a loan to buy the house. So nobody will give us a loan. I don't know if uh, reality would do that, having known us now. So I told Matthew, the problem is we cannot get a loan. And he said we have to give the details about the loan in one week's time. Then he said, don't worry, I'll give that. He'll take the loan, or he would be the one to purchase the house for the Franciscan brothers. And then, before I left for Bombay, I was supposed to leave for Bombay in 
three days time I flew in from Canada from Vancouver saw the house but I didn't have the time to take an appointment and meet his days his days <coughs> at a yes I had rushed bike to Bombay for the meetings so I wrote a letter to his days asking for permission and understood by the Tadevas to follow it up from <coughs> New York. And he did that and his days was gracious enough to give us the permission to start the community here in Sugarland. So this is our second community in USA. And I would like to thank his grace, the Archbishop of Dallas and Houston, for his graciousness and generosity in granting the permission for us to come over here to begin this community with three brothers in his archdiocese. We are, great. we are grateful to you and we assure you the brothers will not disappoint. of St. Teresa and our pastor is Father Stephen Reynolds. As I had mentioned earlier, till we till not we actually till Matthew decided to purchase the house and till we got the permission from the Archbishop, the pastor did not know anything about our coming and then I would not be surprised if he was taken by surprise to know that a new community is coming into his parish without his knowledge. But we are grateful to him for having accepted us gracefully and heartily to his parish and for rendering all assistance for us for everything and meeting our spiritual needs and especially for assist us, assisting us with this function of the day that is blessing and inauguration of the community here. We are grateful to you As we are sure about getting a house, I rang up and spoke to Father John. I said, John, we are going to get a house. Would you recommend our case to his grace, Archbishop? He said, your son is coming to this community? I said, no. He said, if you are not coming, yes, I would recommend. <laughs> Our relationship goes back, as I mentioned, to 93. <coughs> and then I have been trying to get him to Bombay, to our generally, to our community in Rome, to our community in New York. But he said, I am not very fond of traveling and I don't need to travel as I am no more a provincial. So you like to excuse me till you open a house and I close me. And that is being fulfilled today and we are grateful to you Father John for your presence here, for your support to us, for the time we met and I am sure you will continue your encouragement and support to this community. Thank you. And our landlord and lady, Matthew as the parent, Mary as the parent. They are here. What is here? I they? They, they were, they went out of their way to help us. And these days when people are worried about financial responsibilities, commitments, financial burdens, they do not even think twice before deciding to buy the house for us and doing all that is needed for the brothers to come over, to stay here, settle down. And every day, practically both of them call the brothers two to three, to three times to make sure the brothers are safe and they are well taken care of. I have no words to express our gratitude to both of you and the family of Matthew and Mary. Uh, my information is there are 10 of them, 10 families. 
related to Matthew and Mary here in Sugarland area. I have met some of them. Baby, of course, did the renovation work for the house. Simon and family, I met whenever I come this side. We are grateful to all of you in a very special way to Mary, Mary Sapan and Matthew Sapan. As you know, the brothers have come a long way from their homeland. This is going to be a home away from home for them. And the life of the brothers is hard. They have to be a brother to everyone. And I would request all of you who are here to consider them as your brothers. And I wish and pray that they would, in turn, treat you as their brothers and sisters. I'd like to thank each one of you for being here today and for blessing this occasion, for blessing and inauguration of our community. I'd like to wind up with a prayer written by Ibn Funal Tago famous poet of Indian literature. This is my prayer to thee, my Lord. Strike, strike at the root of penury in my heart. Give me the strength lightly to bear my joys and sorrows. Give me the strength to make my love fruitful in service. Give me the strength never to disown the poor or to bend my knees before insolent might. Give me the strength to raise my mind high above daily trifles. Give me the strength to surrender my strength to thy will with love. I wish on this day that the brothers who are going to be living here, Brother Johnny Joseph, the speaker, Brother Innocent, he is so innocent that he is hiding behind <laughs> somebody. And Brother Brito, they would make this prayer their personal life witness, their personal prayer, and they would live that life as brothers to everyone they come into contact with and the people they serve. I wish all of you to have a Nice evening with us. Enjoy the brotherhood and be at home. Now I have invited Dr. Bishop to inaugurate the community by lighting the traditional Indian lamp. It will be followed by lighting of the lamp by a few others. May I invite his grace, Dr. Bishop. Uh, and uh, Brother Supreme General, Joseph Karimari, Reverend Father Stephen Reynolds, the pastor of St. Parish, and Reverend Father John Buck, Oipam, and Mr. Matthew Astapan, who like the, Matthew and Mary Astapan, who like the lamp, the lamp. Foundation letter now. 
A true copy of the letter left behind our beloved founder, October 1942. In Christ, dearly beloved brothers, our Lord Jesus Christ has given me the grace that he calls me to eternal life, not by sudden unexpected death, but I had time by a long wearing sickness to prepare for eternity and the surgical operation which may end my earthly life. Maybe the gate for a better life with all the angels and saints whom we have venerated as our heavenly patron and friends. So let us hope God Almighty will pardon me. Though the blood of Jesus Christ, all my sins and failings, has given to those who believe in him and trust in him his mercy. Like a family father bids farewell to his children when dying, so will I also be parting from you, who for so many years have been my children, my helpers, and co-laborers co co in the vineyard of God in the missions. I ask pardon from all and each. If I have wronged or offended you, and have not given away a good example, and I ask your prayers for my poor soul, if kept in purgatory. I thank you for all the good works you have done with me and for our holy church. And I'm sure many of you will have merited a higher place in heavenly glory than I have obtained by your greater generosity and love of God, with which you have served God in the religious community and in the mission work. All I have to do now is to re recommend to you to re re amend your fraternity in love and charity until the end of your life. Whatever may happen after my death, consider that I wish you to live in unity and in submission to your new superiors. And let not the devil triumph when tempting you to give up your holy intentions and vows and vocation. As we hope, that Almighty God allows his elect in eternal, external life to pray, to plead, and to protect those they have left on earth. So may I hope I can be also useful in eternity to get you more graces for the glorious work in the mission field. Up to now, you have unselfishly sacrificed your comfort, ease, and inclinations in the service of the missions. So I trust you will continue to sacrifice your health and your life for the spreading of the Holy Catholic faith among the poor ignorant pagans in our missions and endeavors to extend your activity year by year to further villages and territories until all India is converted to our Holy Church. May our dear Lord Jesus hear this my last prayer to make useful members of the militant church on earth and bring us later to all together at his heavenly banquet. Goodbye to all of you. Yours affectionately in Christ, Brother Paulus. Now I invite the grace, the Archbishop, to officially appreciate that. Thank you very much, brothers. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May God, the source of all holiness, who never ceases to call us to follow Christ, be with you. And also with you. <clears throat> when two or three are gathered in Christ's name, he is there in their midst. We have gathered here to bless a new house, a new religious house, where the love of Christ will bring together those who in charity and virginity and poverty and obedience desire to follow him more faithfully and closely, relying on the goodness of God from whom all blessings flow. We pray that those who live here will conform their way of life to what they have promised. We ask that with Jesus they will seek the Father's glory in all things, that praying together without ceasing they will be a sign that the church is a praying community. We ask that, led by the Holy Spirit, they will continually fulfill their vocation 
so that Christ may dwell always in us. <clears throat> Let us pray. O oh God, your continuous work begets in us every measure of desire and achievement. We bless you for setting our hearts on heaven during our pilgrim days on earth. Grant to your servants who will live in this house these blessings. To listen to you in faith, to speak to you in prayer, to seek only you in their work, to find you in all they do, to become witnesses to the gospel. Through them, spread the good aroma of Christ everywhere until the day they rejoice in the revelation of his glory who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, let us listen to the words of the letter to the Hebrews. Chapter 13, verses 1 to 17. Keep on loving one another as Christian brothers. Remember to welcome strangers in your homes. There were some who did that and welcomed angels without knowing. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Remember those who are suffering as though you were suffering as they are. For God has said, I will never leave you, I will never abandon you. Let us be bold then and say, The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can you do to me? Remember your former leaders who spoke God's message to you. Think back on how they lived and died and imitate their faith. <coughs> for there is no permanent city for us here on earth. We are looking for the city which is to come. Let us then always offer praise to God as then our sacrifice to Jesus, which is the offering president by our lips that confess him as Lord. Do not forget to do good and to help one another, because they are the sacrifices that please God. Obey your leaders and follow their orders. They watch over your souls without resting, since they must give to God an account of their service. If you obey them, they will do their work gladly. If not, they will do it with sadness, and that would be of no help to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Let us go rejoicing to the house, to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the house of the Lord. I rejoice when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go built as a city, strongly compact. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us all be rejoicing to the house of the house of the Lord. For Israel's law it is, there to praise God's name. There were thrones of judgment of the house of David. For the peace of the Lord, for the peace of Jerusalem, pray. Peace to your house. May peace reign in your walls, in your palaces, peace. Let us so rejoicing to the house of the house of the Lord. For love of my brethren and friends, I say peace of 
upon you for love of the house of the Lord I will ask your good let us go rejoicing to the house of the house of the Jesus walked by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. Then he brought him to Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, uh, Father, Brother Superior, the Brother uh, the Superior General, for your words of introducing me and the rest of us to the history of the missionary brothers of St. Francis. And I'm deeply grateful that so many of you are here to help us bless this new house, which adds another religious house to this archdiocese. Each time that we receive a new uh, group of religious brothers, sisters, priests, we have another great blessing coming to us because the religious who live out their lives as consecrated persons are great witnesses to all of us of how we can follow Jesus more closely imitate him more intensely by following the, the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. So I am deeply grateful to have another religious group here, and I am grateful to Father Bach, uh, John Bach, because he's the one that told me that these are pretty good people. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know who they were, because, you know, we had received different... Uh, different religious here we have in just a few years now you know we have we have a priest from India that takes care of the Sierra Malabar we have a priest that takes care of the Canarian we have a priest that takes care of the Malankara <laughs> and now the, we were visited recently by a Latin rite bishop from uh, India and he says he wants to send me a Latin rite priest so that uh, the Latin rite Indians will not feel neglected, since all the other groups have a priest too. And we have two, we have a group of religious sisters uh, from India. Two groups, huh? Yeah, and now we have, besides the, the, the Sisters of Charity of Mother Teresa. So all of these different ones coming here are a very special blessing for us. And they come here, you know, to 
to witness to their love for God and to serve God's people. And uh, I was I was struck by what Brother Joe said. Uh, you, wherever you go, you 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 fulfill the needs of the people, huh? And, and that's uh, that's such a comforting thought to know that you're here so that you can place yourselves in the service of the people of this uh, this archdiocese. So now, uh, this I, I, when I was asked to come here to bless the house, I didn't. That's why I came. I didn't come prepared to celebrate the Eucharist, but uh, the Eucharist will be celebrated here. Uh, I don't know. You have different priests coming. He, he'll make arrangements. He'll make arrangements with the pastor. Yes. He will come sometime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's that's uh, that's what Mother Teresa said. You know, it took me a long time to get the missionaries of charity here. I kept writing to Mother Teresa, and she would say, "No, I don't. I can't come. I don't have. I don't uh, have anyone to send." And I thought I was going to use that against her canonization. <laughs> but she kept refusing to come to Houston. But finally, before she died, she said yes, she would send sisters. But what she said when she sent the sisters, she said that and having the sisters come, then there's one more tabernacle in Houston. One more place where Jesus lives in his sacramental presence. And one more place where people can come to worship the Blessed Sacrament. And that's what your house will be. There will be a tabernacle here too. Does you already have it? Yes. Okay. You will have a tabernacle here. And so it will be a place where uh, Jesus and his holy sacramental presence remains in our midst and where he will be worshipped here day and night. So, my dear brothers... My dear Franciscan brothers, you're most welcome. Thank you for coming. We ask God's blessings upon your, uh, your apostolate here, upon the ways in which you will serve God through the witness of your own religious lives and the way in which you will be a great help to God's people through the ways in which you will bring to them the love of God in your ministry. So my... Uh, now we have the prayers of faithful. We have a deacon. Yeah. Okay. You see an Indian deacon? Yeah, he's got a dog. Now. <laughs> uh, my brothers and sisters, God our Father wants all people to be saved and calls us to the knowledge of the truth. Let us pray to him with all our hearts. For our Holy Father, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, for Archbishop Joseph A. Fiorenza, all the bishops and the priests of the church may lead and guide the people of God after the example of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God, our prayers. For the congregation of the missionary brothers of St. Francis of Assisi, for our superior general, all the provincials and their respective counselors, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit to lead the congregation and its members to follow the evangelical life after the example of St. Francis of Assisi. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For this new community of brothers, the Lord may bless them abundantly to lead the gospel life and thus radiate the love of Christ to the people with whom they come in contact with. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this gathering, that all of us may become bearers of Jesus' message to the ends of the earth and thus transform the world into the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all the veterans of our country, that the cause for which they stood for and fought for may be established all around the world, namely liberty, freedom, and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord be our for all depart departed brothers and sisters, that all that may receive the final reward promised by our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord be our prayers. Oh God of love, our refuge and strength, hear the prayers of the church and grant us today where we ask of you in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, inspire and author of every holy desire, hear our prayer that you will bestow the kindness of your grace on this religious house of Franciscan brothers. Make it a place of continuous meditation on your holy word, a place of mutual love, 
of tireless service to others. Grant that those who here loyally follow Christ may together become an eloquent witness of their consecration to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. and pray for God's blessing. May Jesus us together in this home. Bless it and keep us safe and those all who will live within it. Give us the Holy Spirit as our strength. Make us steadfast and faithful in the religious commitment by which we have bound ourselves to God. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, and may peace and love always reign in this house. And may this symbol of the light of India is the light of Christ, the light of Christ bringing the gospel to the whole world. And may this light of Christ always shine in this house. Next item in our program is What of Time by Brother Johnny, the superior of this house. And generosity in helping to uh, provide a, a humble home for the missionary Franciscans and to seeing that they were able to come here to be with us. And uh, thank Father John Bach for being with us today and for your pastor now. But let me say this. Your pastor, but if he ever gives you any hard time, <laughs> there's another parish right here, and here's, a, here's an Indian pastor, <laughs> Father Joseph Callan. And I wanted to say a word about Father Joseph because uh, he's sort of the patriarch of the Indian community. <laughs> That's good. And, uh, he is the one from years ago you know, that started gathering all of the Indians whether they were about Nkata, or Tanaya, or Malabar, or India, got out, go from Goya, he gathered them all to, and uh, help to solidify the Indian Catholic community in this diocese. And so uh, we have a great deal of de debt of gratitude to Father Joseph Caledon for what he has done. And because of the wonderful work that he did for a number of years for uh, 25 years, I believe now, right, Joseph? Uh, that we'll be able to see all these other Indian communities flourishing, and really, really will flourishing now. And so I know that uh, that all of you understand that, and and you share my deep gratitude uh, to Father Joseph Calvin. He was really our, our patriarch of the Indian Catholic community. Now, 
we invite all of you to come to the backyard of the house. Those of you who are not seeing the house can also go around and see the house. And then we will gather at the backyard for the agape, the dinner. Thank you. ഭാരം ചുമക്കും ജനം ദുഷ്പ്രവൃത്തിക്കാരുടെ മക്കൾ വഷളായി നടക്കുന്നവ ദൈവമാരെന്നറിയുന്നില്ല അകൃത്യഭാരം ചുമക്കും ജനം ദുഷ്പ്രവൃത്തിക്കാരുടെ മക്കൾ വഷളായി നടക്കുന്നവ ദൈവമാരെന്നറിയുന്നില്ല തൻ്റെയുടയവൻ്റെ കഴുത തൻ്റെ യജമാനൻ്റെ പുൽത്തൊട്ടി അറിയുന്നല്ലോ എൻ ജനമറിയുന്നില്ല കാള തൻ്റെയുടയവൻ്റെ കഴുത തൻ്റെ യജമാനൻ്റെ
Hello, 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 hello.